Welcome everybody to the Sustainability Street podcast hosted by Crowbury Consulting Limited. My name is Becky Toll, Managing Director, and I have great pleasure tonight to introduce Brendan Mackey from Envirovox Limited. Um, we're going to be doing a podcast today all about Industry 4 for the Future, Internet of Things, energy sensors, energy data, energy monitoring, and how all of this lovely stuff, uh, the internet era, can help you and support you with saving energy, reducing your bills and reducing your carbon footprint. So, Brendan, hello. 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 Welcome to the show. Thank you for having <laughs> me. It's, uh, it's very nice to be in your podcast nook. Because, uh, well, obviously, you know, during COVID, we are in um, a social bubble together. So it's uh, it's good to be here. It's good to be talking about these things that are really important to me. Uh, you know, so important that I even have a, a washing machine now that connects to the Internet. So, awesome. you know, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's all fun. <laughs> Great stuff. No, thank you very much for agreeing to come and talk to us. And I believe um, you, you've recently set up Envirovox to yes. support this agenda yeah. around Internet things and we're delighted to have you as an approved subcontractor to Crowley Consulting um, to help our customers embrace the internet of things and industry for for the future so thank you so much for that. Um, So tell us a little bit about what's your company uh, going to be achieving in the next couple of years what's what's the what's the mission what's the dream for Envirovox? The mission really is um, to help big companies um, improve their efficiency much along the same kind of lines as yourselves in Crowbury. Um, and the way I want to do that is I want to give a voice to environmentally conscious companies working in things like Industry 4, so small to medium enterprises um, who really want a platform, who want somebody, as the name would suggest, Enviro, we all know what that's about, uh-huh. but Vox, the end, the Latin word for voice. Uh-huh. So I want to give a voice to these companies. Awesome. Um, so yeah, you know, we, we all, you know, there's no planet B, as the, the protesters <laughs> say and stuff. So, you know, we have to... Clean up our act and and get on top of things. And there's some really fantastic technology out there that's um, being created by all sorts of different small to medium companies. So I want to make sure that they get a stage. And and it's great that you mentioned small to medium enterprises there because there's a lot of companies that could probably benefit from from your help. So there were a lot of buzzwords, a lot of phrases that you just... Real out there, we're going to go through them really slowly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think the first one that I'd like to pick up on is Industry 4.0. Yes, I've heard a lot about it, but yeah. I don't know what is it, how can it help businesses, and, and where do they go? How do they start with Industry 4? Yeah, so I think there's a lot of um well there's a lot of jargon being thrown around and um you know we're we're I'm currently working on a course that we're going to talk about in a bit about kind of helping break down that jargon and making things a lot easier to understand yeah. so industry 4 basically is the fourth round of the industrial revolution so um, you know back in the day we had mining and we had the the steam engine so that was you know your first round of it uh the second would be um the the modern manufacturing lines probably like the likes of henry ford Mm -hmm. and was a big pioneer there and then you know the third round was kind of um you know we'd have robots working on manufacturing Mm -hmm. lines and we've moved more towards automation but now it's about machine to machine Machine communication um and big data so again to you know but they kind of make a bit more sense from the off. But um, uh-huh. but yeah, we're looking at how those machines communicate to each other, the information uh-huh. they tell each other. And there's a lot of really important information in there. Then how you you make the most of that data uh-huh. um, and you make the improvements that you need so that, you know, you can reduce downtime, uh-huh. which is, you know, the, the, the breakdown time that your machines aren't working. Yeah. So if you look at a manufacturing line, they might be making uh-huh. one car every minute, which might be about £30,000. Uh-huh. Um, if that line isn't working, then every minute that company's losing Using thirty thousand pounds, but yeah. on other uh, parts, you know, there's there's a lot of factories out there with leaky pneumatic systems, mm-hmm. and this is something mm-hmm. that I talk about in our teachables presentation. Yeah, is about the money that can be saved because okay. people don't see compressed air as uh, um, you know something that can cost a lot of money. You've got compressors yeah, running around the clock, you know. Yeah. Air, yeah, 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 yeah. So oh, okay. um, you need to be able to monitor these things and see how you reduce um, your consumption. 
okay be okay. able to visualize it and then cool. you know um so i think obviously the iso standards from yes. Colbury side are a huge part of this interesting yeah. mm-hmm. so is it mostly manufacturers that can do industry for or could you be service type of business as well i think or? i think there's a little bit in it yeah. for everyone there's all yeah. sorts of sensors out there that can measure all sorts of things okay. um you know we're working with another company at the moment um oh. who'll be coming along you know i'll be giving them a voice as well to do with yeah. power factor correction power factor um correction. and to do with uh, measuring electricity and okay. you know make sure we're efficiently using electricity mm-hmm. so it, i don't think it's specifically for mm-hmm. any one industry i think we can all adopt a bit more of what yeah. is known as the internet of things Oh, that's yes. the next buzzword I was going to ask you about. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so it sounds like Industry 4, it's here, it's landed. Yeah. If you're a smart, savvy company and you want to make savings and be more energy efficient, carbon neutral, you can embrace this and use it in a strategic way. Yeah. Linking absolutely it maybe with isos which are international standards which we'll talk about absolutely yeah. um but it's for everybody it's quite an inclusive um opportunity for people absolutely. to get involved yeah. with and a, a yeah. big factor of what a uh, company i'm about to talk about go monitor a big factor uh-huh. of what we do is um you know is remove the confusion out of it we're, we're here okay. to be guides to help people get towards that and really to you know to fit in with all the different types of systems that are out there because there are myriad mm-hmm. systems out there Lots um of, to yeah. connect to so uh, we've got to make sure they all talk to each other because some of them <laughs> go back to the 80s and before so oh, don't talk about the 80s <laughs> that wasn't a good era anyway uh, right what is internet of things brendan now please break this down because some of our listeners may never have heard of internet yeah. of things before uh does it talk to these industry four sensors or is it the same thing? well let's <laughs> let's start the you know Let's talk about my washing machine. Okay. Uh, I have a washing machine that I've just awesome. bought that yeah. connects to the internet. Um, oh. It is an Internet of Things device. Likewise, okay. my security system in my home is an Internet of Things device. Okay. Well, a series of devices. So there's sensors all over my house and the Internet of Things is a huge uh-huh. growing industry. Mm-hmm. Um, and it can be everything and anything. I've got an intelligent heating system. Oh, okay. So I can basically control the heating security and even my washing machine from my phone. From your and, phone. And that is effectively Internet of Things. It is Lying. things that connect to the Internet and say, hey, we're here. This is what we're doing. doing what yeah. do you want us to do? Uh, and so there's Gosh. sensors at one side of it, and then there's actuators. So sensors okay. detect things that are happening, and uh-huh. actuators make the things happen. Make it happen. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, and it's controlled through apps, is it? Yeah, through the apps. Or, there's there's yeah. lots of different ways, and um, the cloud is a big part of it as well. And again, yeah. this is the the type of thing that I talk about in in the teachables. Awesome. Um So we we break down all of that sort of thing. Yeah. Now there is an industrial part of it known as so Internet of Things is sometimes called IoT. IoT, um, yes. and then on the industrial side it's called IIOT so Uh nothing too spectacularly complicated yeah yeah okay so I hope I hope a lot our listeners (laughs) have got that I'm sure bear with me people comments or something (laughs) on that one but that sounds great so and again it's not just for large corporates this stuff is it Brent no no it could be a small to medium business you know even in our houses you know a homeowner yeah yeah, you can you can tell um Alexa I hope you have no Alexa devices in here because she'll go nuts but you can tell her to uh you know change the heating in your living room or you know so it's i mean it even if i look at my heating system um it will create graphs of how efficient my um energy usage has been for my heating and likewise you know we can do that with things like um there are all in one sensor so say before Mm -hmm. um all of this and i guess i'm going on a bit of a tangent here but Mm -hmm. before the latest round of things that have come through you would have to have say on a flow circuit in in a factory if you were wanting to detect say changes in the flow so things like leakages Mm -hmm. that sort of stuff you would have to have a pressure sensor probably a temperature sensor a flow Mm -hmm. sensor and then a total volume sensor as well four four different types yeah Yeah. now with the changes that have been made you can Mm -hmm. actually get all four sensors in one Um, and it's what i really love about this new technology that's coming through Mm -hmm. as well is that before if a sensor broke and they never Mm -hmm. break at nice times it's always four (laughs) o'clock on a sunday morning Um, the engineer scrambles out to switch out that sensor and then has to find and has to press a whole load of different buttons to make that sensor work to get it back on now we have memory plug functions as part of this so you plug a sensor in and the memory plug memorizes 
um, okay. what the settings on the sensor are. So if it breaks, Ooh. you just go get another one and immediately yeah. you've massively reduced your downtime. So there's no so, break in service. There's no break in the manufacturing because you just literally like for like... Go out and pop yeah. it out and pop it in. There like you go. Lego. Yeah. Like Lego. Exactly. I like it. I Plug like it. and play. Great. Which I hope I don't have to explain. But <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. It does what so, it says on the tin. <laughs> um, you've very kindly agreed to write a course for us and be yes. an author for Crowbury Consulting on yes. our Teachable platform which is available at crowbreconsultant.com forward slash training. Yeah. Um, and your course that you're going to be designing, Brendan, is it all about Internet of Things, Industry 4, condition monitoring that you've mentioned? Absolutely, it, yeah. yeah. Uh, and what sort of things can delegates look forward to, you know, should they buy the course? Hopefully they will. Uh, you know, what, what sort of teaching are you going to be offering on, on that course? So I want to, I guess, kind of... Uh, I understand what it's like out there mm-hmm. for a lot of people who might be wanting to make these environmental changes. I know it's a scary thing, especially if you're, if you're a long time in a business and you're mm-hmm. very established and somebody is asking you to adopt something new like Industry 4, it can be scary. Yeah. So basically, I've started at the fundamentals uh-huh. and we discuss what a sensor is, what an actuator is, okay. and gradually add more and more details. So yeah. you don't have to have a wealth of knowledge. You can come from a different kind of background yeah. and you can go through the course. And my hope is yeah. that we can take it from a very simple place, um, you know, from from basic, basic um, understanding yeah. and we can start to grow and build that. And there will be an opportunity to um, to, to give feedback for it okay. as well. And yeah. we want to, you know, I'll be doing it in conjunction with one of um, the other companies that I'm representing, Go Monitor. Go Monitor. Yeah, so yeah, we'll, we'll talk about um, them as well, mm-hmm. but we'll be doing it in conjunction with them. So you'll okay. be able to see um, what it will look like when you're looking at your computer screen and you're able to see all your sensors in your factory. So will there be and can, demos and things like this? Yeah, there'll be demos, yeah, there'll be the test features. logins as yeah. well, so people can actually oh, log in okay, themselves cool. and play around with it a little yeah. bit because I think that's important. Engagement yeah. and actually being practical about these things is, Give is the most important. Give people a taste of, of the, the, exactly. the, the Go monitor. Yeah. Yeah. Is it kind of like a dashboard? Just Basically, yeah, like, like a dashboard. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, And again, we explain kind of right from the front end, from the sensors uh-huh. and the actuators we explain how gateways work and yeah. then you know all the different types of systems that might be out there that people cool. already have and how we can basically you know mm-hmm. um there, there's there's service agreements that you can get as part of a contract okay. with go, go monitor uh-huh. and so somebody can come and look at all the systems you've had yeah. and go for the simplest route to uh-huh. get all of those systems industry four ready yeah. usable for your um your iso standards as well uh-huh. so uh-huh. tracking all of that data Monitoring and making sure Sure. Yeah, 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 and making sure, of course, it's it's um, it's secure as well, which is going to be a major factor of of, of usage of data in the future. We will yeah. we will talk about data later on. Mm-hmm. So, um, our listeners for this podcast, that's just to say that Brendan Mackey uh, is going to be launching his teachable course through our platform in the yes. in the very very near future. All things internet. Internet of Things and Industry Four for the future. Yes. So we and, look and forward to. Yeah, and I, I just yeah. I would say as well, it does it will specifically um refer to parts of the ISO standards as well that people might be looking at. So, so there's a connection. Yeah, fifty thousand and one yeah. say. So it will it will focus on exact segments of that as well. So awesome. people can understand if they're being faced with this big long ISO standard that that is a, a key part of it. Yeah. And it does link in. Yeah. So, Brendan, let's have a chat about your soon-to-be-released teachable course that you're going to do for Crowbury Consulting. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Crowbreeconsulting.com forward slash training. Um, And you're going to be one of our newest, latest authors. Yes. Um, So, folks out there will be able to pay any time and download the teachable course, which is going to be all about Internet of Things, Condition Monitoring, Factories 4 for the Future, Industry 4. Have I got that right? Yes, absolutely. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, well, one of the um, people that I represent, um, Go Monitor, Mm -hmm. that company, one of the guys from there, Chris, is going to be on the course with me as well. And, uh, well, what we're looking at doing is uh, we're nearly finished now, so we should be launching in the very, very near future. Um, we will be talking about basically from the very fundamentals right through to, you know, complete end-to-end 
IIoT, Internet of Things solutions. IIoT. Yes. Internet so, of Things. Yes. Okay. So we'll be looking, um, and it'll be about how all of these things fit into the ISO standards as well. So yeah. 50,001 is uh-huh. the environmental um, standard at yes. the moment that people are starting to learn more and more about. Yeah. So we will be covering off, you know, the sections and that that will bear specific reference to what we'll be talking about. Um, and mainly what we're looking at is uh, we'll, we start from the very fundamentals. You mm-hmm. don't really have to have any kind of experience around around um, these things before that's the idea okay. so we'll start at things like what is a sensor so what is an actuator entry level yeah. available for everybody yeah yeah, yeah. what yeah. is like what i've just spoken about what is industry for what is internet mm-hmm. of things um, and how all that kind of comes together and mm-hmm. then we go into more about talking about the kind of systems that people have already out there because there are loads of different um, devices that go you know back to the 80s yeah. um, and they've got loads of different they're called field bus protocols which are basically okay. like a language that they communicate okay. in <laughs> and so what um, Go Monitoring are able to do is basically their their I guess their mantra is um, IoT solutions simplified simplified very straightforward I like the sound yeah. of that. so so we <laughs> want to make their solutions um as backwards compatible as possible which yeah. basically means there are all these different devices out there and uh-huh. they all speak in different ways okay. and we want a kind of a one fits all one, to one help size these, yeah. fits all yeah and on the course will there be for the delegates who, who purchase, will they be able to see like a demo or have case absolutely. studies, yeah. things like that? Yeah, or? absolutely. So we'll do um, video demonstrations of mm-hmm. how the platform works because it's not just about collecting the data, which is mm-hmm. why we talk about sensors and mm-hmm. that whole element of it but it's also then about sending that data back and okay. you know so there's we talk about the route so you go from your sensors to your plcs to your hmis uh-huh. don't worry about this stuff Lots we go of into letters. all of that um <laughs> and then you go to a thing called a gateway which as the name okay. would suggest is your gateway, gateway between your factory and then yep. the cloud or wherever it is that you're storing data okay. yeah now that's a great great uh segue to let me ask you about sensors and cloud technology how do they work together um, and, and what's the value of that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there are loads of different ways that mm-hmm. sensors can benefit us in manufacturing from detecting leakages in water or, you know, pneumatic okay. systems, because um, it's not just about um, the lost air and how much it influences the electricity usage. It's also factories may want to be expanding what mm-hmm. they're doing. And some yeah. uh, machines will have safety locks that will engage when yeah. the pressure uh, drops. So if you've got a really okay. old system with yeah. pressure all over the place, mm-hmm. literally all over the place. I go to um, a lot of factories like that. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, these new machines, it, yeah. it's a problem when you want to... Uh, when you want to expand and so yeah. what a lot of people do is they just put in another compressor and oh, they might have see. six or seven compressors where they might only need three yeah. and so we need to be able to connect the things in and then visualize the data mm-hmm. and then utilize the data so there mm-hmm. are specific modules about that in Teachables as well interesting yes so is the cloud one cloud or is it two or three clouds in well this case? it depends what mm-hmm. you're looking at so mm-hmm. um i mean and again it varies from uh, factory to factory, customer to customer. Mm-hmm. Some people don't like the data going off site, and that's okay. Yes. Um, you know, you can use a server internally in a company. Okay. Some companies that I've worked with have even used a gaming mm-hmm. laptop as a server. So Blimey. they just go down to the local <laughs> PC shop and get a gaming laptop. And uh, yeah, okay. you just, it's about storage and it's about processing power, and we can run through all that I, as well. And keeping it on site. We'll, we'll, we'll come on to data security yeah. later. The, the other, the yeah. other element of that then is, mm-hmm. you know, that we can we can export it to the cloud as well so we can mm-hmm. take it outside but um you know we can make sure that it's secure as well mm-hmm. so um go monitor use tls uh one two encrypted um mm-hmm. connections okay um so you know the data is safe, safe. as well and yeah. then it can be displayed in a meaningful way um, um how big are these sensors brendan are you talking average mobile phone size or are you talking matchstick size oh well it but depends when you got them and what they do but right. um you know i've seen a lot of big old clunky ones from okay. you know the 70s and the 80s <laughs> we might not be able to do a whole lot with those but you never know yeah. because yeah. um you know generally there are digital signals and analog signals and yeah. io link signals to come out okay. of them again we explain this but yeah. we we are able to capture digital and analog signals and io link so yeah. 
Um, it, it really depends what you have, but you know, as part of agreements with Go Monitor, mm. you can get a kind of a service agreement. So okay. they can actually come to site, look at what you've got, and uh-huh. then make a recommendation of really the least invasive mm. and most effective way because there of could gathering be data. Businesses out there that have in the past done a bit of sensor technology. Absolutely, yeah. Maybe the person who managed it has left, moved on, yeah. and they've inherited or got legacy systems maybe yeah. that need a bit of a refresh. Yeah. Can, can um, you help people with that? Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, they, they need something that's going to talk to sensors from company A, but also sensors from company mm-hmm. B and, you know, different PLCs and controllers right. and things from, from loads of different. So, yeah, oh, we, can, we, can, we can do all those sorts it sounds, of things. It yeah. could be, like, quite complicated if you go into a factory that's already got a lot of them. Absolutely. Because yeah. you're kind of picking over the history and the legacy stuff. But if you go into a factory for like the first time where they've got no sensors, yeah, is obviously that's going to be easier, isn't it? I guess. Uh, well, I mean, it depends, and we can look at the sensors element yeah. of things as well. So, um, you know, and there's there's loads of different ways um, that we can help. So, for example, a vibration sensor okay. can be used to pick up vibrations on, say, motors, gearboxes, yeah. bearings, yeah. all sorts of systems, compressors as well. Could you use them in CNC cutting machines? Absolutely, yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so, um, we're able to produce then on the mm-hmm. vibration that comes out up to a couple of months in advance when those machines are going to fail right. and using uh, forward Fourier transforms mm. a bit of a complicated you thing. just lost me then I, yeah I just <laughs> <laughs> I threw the engineer card in there he did um, but yeah the um, listeners are going nuts now <laughs> so basically we can diagnose what diagnose. the problem is as well so okay. it, and you can even do it to a level of saying is it the inner race the outer race or the rolling element of a wow. bearing that's going to go so it's um, that precise it's that that's yeah. amazing and it is yeah. really uh, you know it is I always say you know it's mm-hmm. like it's just we're we're basically giving people a crystal ball yeah. that says yeah. you know these are the areas where potential downtime may occur and, and can, that can link to planned preventative maintenance absolutely it can yeah link to like say engineers planning when to go on to site which is a cost isn't it for a mm-hmm. lot of businesses if unless they've got their own in-house people but absolutely, even then yeah. it's a cost well um, a, a big yeah. factor as well of where these things help is you know maintenance schedules uh-huh. um you know make sure making sure that whoever you've got there to fix things mm-hmm. that their time is being used um yeah. appropriately yeah um and so you can you know you can really cut down on wastage that way as well yeah. uh, as well so um you know oftentimes when we weigh up the cost compared to the value of mm-hmm. what these things bring um yeah. it the, the, the value of it massively outweighs if i were to look at one example of a food company okay. that i used to work with because mm. food is high volume yeah, yeah um you know when they have downtime when they have a say a gearbox in this instance went mm-hmm. down um you know they needed yeah. to get a replacement now we were able to um the company i worked for we were able to get a gearbox put in the back of a taxi and sent from wolverhampton up to the the, the um, customer site Blimey. but even doing that over the course of uh three hours versus over 24 hours yeah. we saved them about twenty one thousand pounds now it would have That's been far more thing. appropriate yeah, yeah. if um they had had a condition monitoring sensor on the gearbox yeah. and a couple of months before that they would have been able to say okay it's like a dashy line yeah on the it's almost the same. Like, like a light on your dashboard yeah. a red amber yeah. green indicator mm-hmm. and they could say okay this needs a bit of attention and they pro- could have probably just replaced one bearing versus swapping out the whole the gearbox. Whole gearbox so yeah and then there's obviously the downtime and the panic and all that sort of yeah, thing as well yeah. so because if you're manufacturing something like this a fast moving good fast moving commodity you don't want to lose any production do you, you don't want to lose any time yeah. if you're a 24 hour seven you know 24 7 production factory mm-hmm. um so that sounds like there's a lot of benefits um, to using the sensor technology in the cloud yeah. do you have to be you know phd trained to understand this brendan or no can anyone pick no it up? Um, that's why you know the, the go monitor in particular and, and really my mission as well is about mm. simplifying these things because yeah. it is over complicated by yeah. phd level so on and so <laughs> forth um, yeah but, um, you know, um, when I look at what they do, you know, that, you know, they want it to be secure. They want mm. it to be simple. Um, but yeah. Um, do they, you think it could put people off because it is engineering and I think maybe it can a be. bit frightening, all these yeah. acronyms and everything, so that, but actually it's an, in, it's an indicator. Like you said, it's something on the dashboard flashing saying, Hey, you need to look at this. Exactly. And if you do that, it can save you money. 
cook, cook down on your carbon footprint, yeah. save and be more efficient. Yeah. You know, it's I not think, that yeah, scary. Really, it comes down it? to, you know, people fear yeah. what they don't understand. Mm-hmm. Um, and we want to, obviously with the teachables, we want to yeah. help improve that understanding. But then, you know, go monitor. And my, my own attitude is about partnerships. We want to yeah. work in partnerships with people um, to help, you know, continuously yeah. develop the offering that I'm providing and that go yeah. monitor and obviously Crowberry are providing as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. We want feedback. We want to understand where yeah. things are too complicated yeah, and we yeah. want to simplify it because um, we want to empower people to be able to do these things themselves. Perfect. That's how we're going to get through the environmental situation yeah. we're in. And also uh, w- work towards net carbon zero as well, absolutely. savings and energy savings. The so, onus on this is on everybody yeah. to make sure that we work towards these things. Yeah. Yeah. So and we in need terms to help of them. companies that you've worked with um, that are environmentally focused, energy friendly, have you got any case studies that you could share with us, Brendan, around Internet of Things and you know, sensors, this kind of stuff. Absolutely. I mean, um, there's all sorts. I'm just trying to think of one off the top of my head now. You don't uh, have to mention names. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I, I know, you yeah. know, across the board with yeah. um, particularly the pneumatic sensor I mentioned earlier, yeah. the four in one, you know, that obviously has saved an awful lot of money up front to customers. Yeah. But then, you know, when you look at, um, I heard a statistic at one point, it was um, a one millimeter hole in a pneumatic system cost about a hundred pounds a year. Yeah. Um, now I don't know about you but I have been on manufacturing and you lines hear where hiss, yeah, yeah you, you at the end around, of the day you switch yeah, everything off yeah. you hear the hissing yeah uh, the, the holes are significantly bigger than, than one, one yeah. mil, you know, I, so. I'll tell you a funny story just to, <laughs> if I may I went and did a, a factory audit a few years ago and everything was switched off because they were having like one of these maintenance days and I walked past one of the animatronics and there was a hiss coming from it and bear in mind I've been doing audits for a long time and I heard this hiss and I said oh, I think you've got an air leak there and the the guy was like, oh, no, no, it's meant to make that noise. And I just looked at him and I said, I don't think <laughs> when it's off, it's meant to be making any noises. It make really good. He oh. accepted that and uh, they checked it out and there was actually a leak. So, you know, if you hear a hiss, it's usually something telling you something's not right, isn't it? Absolutely. You know? yeah. <laughs> or it's a big snake and you better get out. <laughs> so this is all great because it's helping business be more eco-friendly, energy saving, working towards net carbon zero, which is where we've got to get to, isn't it? As, as a nation and across Europe as well. I, I think it's, it's mm. not even about... Um, even carbon zero now, which obviously is where we should be aiming, but it's also about reversal and the new yeah. kind of technologies that will come out to help us reverse the effect of what we've, yeah. you know, as a collective humanity, what, is, what yeah. we've done to the planet. Mop so, up, mop up what yeah, done. you know, we're kind of starting a chain of events here. So, you know, we need to make yeah. sure that we don't just prevent causing more events. We need to reverse what's happened as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. you know, it will take more understanding and it will take, you know, uh, more education so that's that's why i'm delighted to be able to step yes. out and give these kind of companies a voice yeah um, and, and get them involved and guide them through it because i'm sure the listeners listening to this podcast today thinking internet of things sounds great uh you know factory floor for the future condition monitoring sensors and then people might get a bit scared but actually it's not that scary when you break it down it's things talking to each other, isn't it? Yep. And saying, hey, we've got a problem, come fix us, mm-hmm. before it blows up into an even bigger problem. Really. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, I, and I'm sure we've got lots of listeners who have maybe got some of this legacy stuff that could come to you through Envirox. Um, Absolutely, Enviro, Envirovox, Envirovox sorry, yeah, it's and, okay. And go monitor, <laughs> you know, and, and ask you for help because this is something we find a lot is you know if people leave uh, jobs and they go to different jobs they don't pass the manual on if you absolutely yeah, yeah so there's nobody there with the knowledge to go and tinker with this stuff and then they're left feeling a bit like floundering because yeah i mean yeah. In, on a, in a way i can kind of relate to it i guess uh yeah. in that um i just bought a house and it's an old house oh. uh it's about 130 years old and uh you know, you look at some of the way things have been done to yeah. the house, the paintings, the decorating, that sort of stuff, and you start kind of meddling with it a bit, and before uh-huh. you know it, things are starting to get a bit out of control. <laughs> so, I, to an extent, I can relate to somebody who comes Dude. in yeah. as a maintenance manager and has yeah. to figure out how the last person did it, and, you know, they might see that sensor in the corner that's not causing any trouble, and if they go near it, it might cause trouble. This but, is why you DIY know, stands for... Destroy it yourself. Correct. Yeah, I am now a... Um, <laughs> I now have a loyalty card with B&Q. Yeah. Uh, 
Brilliant. No, so not. can I just ask about security? You mentioned it a few minutes ago around this GDPR law and, you know, moving packets of information about it could be within a factory, it could be within the country, or if you've got a site that's in France, a site that's in Birmingham, for example. What, what are the sort of constraints and issues around data security for condition monitoring internet of things is there, is there any issues with that or is um, it all okay? yeah i mean we have to consider now that we're moving into the age of smart cities and smart grids yeah. and everything is smart my home is smart my washing machine is smart <laughs> uh you know um so we're getting to the stage now where you know the wars of the future yeah. won't be fought with bombs they'll be fought with data um, you'll be looking at hackers that can switch off whole grids that can shut down. You, you saw, yeah. you know, what happened a few years ago. They say the blackout in New York. It was absolute yeah. pandemonium. Yeah. Um, and that uh, you know, if 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 these kind of mainframes are able to be hacked into, mm. then a lot of damage can be done. Damage but, big time. So yeah, yeah so yeah. data security is a huge factor. Um, that people want mm-hmm. to know about going forward so they need to know that their data and the control of you know any automation they're bringing in is secure um so yeah so um obviously yeah we've got the tls12 um encrypted connections with uh, go monitor mm-hmm. it's it's an industry standard encryption yeah um so it's kind of accepted broadly yeah um but again you know um these things as i said before they come down to customers i've worked yeah. with some say pharmaceutical customers who want to keep the data on site and that's fine yeah we can do that as well the idea is about a partnership and yeah. every customer every line everything is different in every manufacturer yeah so if um, you want to keep the data on site you can have a server on site absolutely or you yeah. can outsource it to a cloud through go monitor and virovox yeah um but it's what the customer wants at the end exactly. of the day that, that, at the end it. of the day it always comes down yeah. to what is going to work the best uh-huh, for uh-huh. a customer um, and how they want to do things I'm sure our listeners Simple are enough idea. happy <laughs> enough with that. So in summary, Brendan, um, what we've been talking about today, it's all been things to do with Industry 4 for the future, Internet of Things, condition monitoring, using sensors to be more savvy in terms of planned preventative maintenance, reducing uh, your, your carbon footprint, increasing your efficiency if you're in manufacturing or if you're a service you know, business looking to be more efficient with your service provision i guess um and this is something that's not just for the big boys it's for sme businesses as well it's for everyone uh, for everyone. you have you have to remember i think that yeah. you know amazon facebook these all started as small mm-hmm. businesses and oh, small yeah. and medium yeah. businesses every day have these kind of ideas yeah. and they just need to get that platform to get those ideas out there so that they can start to grow and they can start to help more people yeah. And that's really what I'm trying to to get at. I think really yeah. with with the um, the companies I'm working with. Yeah. Perfect. And um, we look forward to welcoming you as an author to Teach Balls. Oh, uh, yes. You're going to help uh, put that Very course exciting. together. Um, so the listeners uh, to this podcast today, Brandon Mackey from Envirovox is going to be one of our authors on Teach Balls, linking everything we've said to ISO fifty thousand and one Energy Management Standard as well. Absolutely. Um, so if you're interested in the energy management course there's other courses available on there through crowbreeconsultant.com forward slash training um so yeah thanks ever so much brendan thank you for having me i uh, Um, i hope i can come back uh you know on on your next season i'm sure Uh, (laughs) there's going to be more opportunities to come and talk everything internet of things condition monitoring net carbon zero energy saving this is what we're all about on the sustainability street podcast and thank you for your time um if our listeners have any comments or feedback I'm sure they can get in touch can with get you in touch, through yeah. the site. Yeah, yeah envirovox.co.uk. Hey, there yeah. you go. <laughs> All right. Well done. Thank so you very much. Thanks, everyone, for Cheers. listening. Bye. And tune in for the next Sustainability Street podcast. Uh, my name's Becky Toll, Manager and Director of Rubric Consultant Limited, and we'll hear from you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.